Thanks for joining us on Best of Wisconsin Homes. I'm Josh with Josh Lavik and Associates. We're here doing our Community Spotlight Series, uh, highlighting different areas around the Madison area. Here we're over on the east side of Madison, so if you're thinking about maybe moving to the area or just want to get to know areas in our city and some cool highlights and destinations, feel free to check out the videos and reach out to us if you'd like. Welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Homes. I'm Josh with Josh Lavik and Associates and I'm here with Michael today at the uh, Dane County Regional Airport here in Madison. So uh, thanks for being on the show today and why don't you uh, yeah, tell our viewers a little bit more about the airport and what makes it unique here. Absolutely and thank you for having me. Um, again, my name is Michael Rickers. We're at the Dane County Regional Airport today. Uh, it's a South Central Wisconsin airport. Um, we're about uh, we're up to 16, 17 nonstop uh, destinations uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we got down to about 11 uh, nonstop destinations, but before that we had 24, which is okay. a really, really good number for an airport our size. Um, made us a, a kind of a susceptible to when the, the airport market shrunk a little bit during the pandemic. Uh, we mm -hmm. lost a lot of those nonstop routes, but we're working on getting those back right now. Got it, that makes sense. What are some of the more popular nonstop destinations? Well, right now, as we're getting into winter, everyone wants to go to the warm weather destinations. So oh. our uh, Florida destinations are really popular. Uh, sure. Phoenix uh, is really popular. Uh -huh. uh, but we're working on getting a lot of the business destinations back. So we noticed mm -hmm. that um, a lot of the destinations that we lost during the pandemic were business oriented. The business mm -hmm. community, of course, went to Zoom and mm -hmm. um, you know Microsoft Teams for their mm -hmm. meetings. They weren't traveling as much. Sure. So we're trying to get those business destinations back so that the business traveler can start traveling again. Absolutely. You know, that's New York and DC, LA, San Francisco, Seattle, that kind of thing. For sure, mm -hmm. got it. Well, in this facility here, I know every time I've flown out of the airport here, I just, I'm always impressed by just the, the overall, you know, look and feel of it. It's, uh, I mean, tell me more about the structure and when it was maybe built or remodeled. Yeah, and absolutely. Kind of so we just celebrated our 80th, 80th anniversary a couple years ago, mm -hmm. uh, and that's as a commercial airport. Of course, it was a military airport before that. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we have 13 gates, but we just started a $85 million uh, expansion project, uh, expanding the south end of the terminal. So mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to demolish the, the three southern gates um, and then add on six gates to the end. So we are growing as an airport. Mm -hmm. uh, what we noticed in 2019 is that we were physically running out of space. That's how fast we were growing. And um, of course, uh, not knowing the pandemic was in front of mm -hmm. us, we were anticipating physically running out of space in about two to, year, two to three years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went forward with this expansion project. Um, it's slated to be completed in 2023. Okay. And that's going to give us uh, the ability to have more aircraft, more flights, bigger aircraft, which means lower ticket fares, which of course everybody likes. Sure. Um, and that's going to allow us to continue to grow well into the future. Absolutely. And this, uh, it almost feels like a Frank Lloyd Wright kind of style and like the feel of everything. Is that that by design and intention? Is that Absolute, true? Yeah, definitely intentional. Frank yeah. Lloyd Wright being, of course, a uh, Wisconsin name, a Wisconsin uh, tradition, if you will, for uh, for design. Yeah. Uh, we really uh, we lean into that here. You can see everything is sort of mid-century modern, Frank Lloyd Wright inspired. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be throughout the the terminal expansion as well. It's something that we really pride ourselves on is the aesthetic beauty of our facility. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it's a differentiator. If you go to some of our bigger competitors in uh, different markets, yeah. um, it, it's more industrial. You know, it's it's sure. more utilitarian, and and that's completely understandable given how many people pass through their facility. Yeah. We're a smaller airport and we, we know that. We want it to be kind of a, a smaller, cozier hometown feel. So yeah. um, our, our ceilings are a little bit lower. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's, it's just a cozier spot. But of course, again, after the expansion, we'll have 16 gates here. So we really can do uh, a lot of volume, a lot of flights out of here. Sure, sure, yeah. And you got obviously a lot of great little vendors here in the middle and places to, you know, load up on your Wisconsin gear before you grab a flight somewhere. And Absolutely. We pride ourselves, of course, on uh, Wisconsin beer and cheese and sausages. Yeah. Uh, you can load them up uh, right here at the airport after security. You can throw them on your carry-on. Yeah. Um, when the pub is open, it's open seven days a week after 11. Uh, you can take your favorite beer all the way to the gate nice. uh, while you wait for your flight. It's a very enjoyable way to wait <laughs> for your flight. Absolutely. And, uh, 
Yeah, like I said, all of your Wisconsin favorites right here at the airport. You can take them wherever you're going. Very cool. Well, what about anything else? Uh, maybe that you know, maybe somebody that's never flown out of this airport before, or something, somebody that's new to the Madison area. Anything else that you might uh, say to them to kind of highlight or something to keep in mind? Well, one thing we want passengers to know, whether you've been traveling your know, whole adult life or mm -hmm. if it's your very first trip, mm -hmm. this is a safe process. Of mm -hmm. course, over the last year with the pandemic, year and a half with the pandemic, there's a lot of uncertainty about things uh, that you're usually accustomed to. Sure. Traveling is safe. Uh, we revamped uh, all of our cleaning processes. Uh, mm -hmm. We've brought in a bunch of new equipment to sterilize uh, the terminal every day and multiple times throughout the day. Sure. We have free masks at many of our entrances. We have hand sanitizer uh, throughout the terminal. So when you're here, it, it's a safe and clean process mm -hmm. and the airlines themselves are doing all kinds of uh, cleaning processes on the airplane. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's a true safe and efficient process to come travel. So there, there shouldn't be any fear. That's awesome. Yeah, that's definitely a concern with uh, things like that with travel these days. But uh, hey, Michael, I really appreciate you sharing a little bit more about the airport and, uh, and our viewers today. Sure. So uh, you're watching Best of Wisconsin Homes Community Spotlight. And I'm Josh with Josh Lavick and Associates. Welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Homes. I'm Josh with Josh Lavick and Associates doing our community spotlight today. Uh, we're over on the near east side of Madison, right off of Atwood Avenue, Wabisa Street, uh, right here, uh, bike path right along here. And we're here with Letitia Nelson of the Goodman Community Center. Yeah, so, hi, Josh. <laughs> welcome. Thanks so <laughs> well, much thank for you. thanks so much for being on the show today. Uh, yeah, tell us tell us a little more about the Goodman Community Center and uh, what you guys do here. Well, what don't we do here? Um, the Goodman Community Center actually is a community-based center that welcomes all ages from our littlest ones of three years old all the way up to 103. We have um, youth and teens that are here. We have an after-school program. Um, most of the work is around our youth and our, that community service for them, having a place for them to go. Um, but we do have our after school program for our younger um, children as well and some programming for our older adults. Awesome. Well, tell me, tell our viewers a little more about that. What kind of programming do you mean? What do you, what do you got going on? Oh boy, what don't we have going on? <laughs> yeah. I will say that um, our after school program encompasses them doing some holistic trips, learning about who they are as people, doing a lot of um, SEL, um, so learning that social emotional learning um, impact that they have on themselves and then the greater community. And then our older adults come and they learn lots of things. They come and get some wellness and um, fitness activity from our fitness center. They come and socialize. I have to say that they were probably one of the groups that kept through um, coming together even during COVID because they needed to see each other. So it's a place for them to connect and continue to reconnect um, and just have those social opportunities to be able to have somebody to talk to and to laugh with and they're funny because they play cards sometimes and they do bingo and they're very serious about their bingo. Yeah. Um, one of the other things that we do, and I know that most of Madison knows this, is we have a food pantry and um, that helps serve and support the community in a lot of ways. Um, we do meal delivery with the, in those places where people can't get to us. Mm. And then we have a drive through food pantry that will go back to its normal function um, as of the 17th of August. Um, and we just do a lot of different things. Yeah, sounds like it. Yeah. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, I even just walking up here. I mean, there's the the big community gardens. I mean, are you yes. guys obviously you manage and are yes. involved in those? Yes, we do. Too? We manage the entire community garden to a certain extent, and then right in front of our building, our youth actually plant everything that is out here in front, and then we harvest those things, and they do um, use that whatever they get out of the garden for their what's called the preservation CSA, where they have meal. People can do tickets and come and pick up already prepared food. Um, we also have little kits that we put together that is canned. Somebody said a lost art. Yes, lost art. <laughs> they learn how to can their vegetables and things like that. And so they use that for the preservation CSA. 
Wow, that's awesome. So you guys are certainly doing a lot of cool things. I mean, the, the, the structure, the, the buildings here are really, truly magnificent as well. Is mm -hmm. there, uh, I believe you have like some meeting space available as well? Like if can we people do. use? Or yes, what, what so that you like? can, we have really inexpensive meeting space here, mm -hmm. as well as we do a full catering um, program as well. So you can come and cater your weddings, a baby shower, things like that. Um, we do have space in both buildings for you to use for that. People can use the meeting space to ha host um, big events for their staff, things like that, um, and really economical. So not like a big, fancy um, <laughs> country club, yeah. but if you see the space inside, you would be shocked because yeah. it, it looks like it in the inside. Oh, so. I know. I've walked through a, a yeah. number of the spaces and they are truly beautiful. Yeah, they're Absolutely. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, very cool. What, uh, you know, this is going to be played also for some of our viewers, maybe that have never been to this side of town. Anything, any last uh, few things that you might say to someone that's maybe never been to this part of town or the Goodman Community Center or anything like that? that I would say, say call us, come take a tour if you've never been here before, or just ride through the space and, and sit a while and watch the organic community that happens here, both along the bike path. Um, within a, both of our spaces, there's always life brewing and things going on, and it's just a good space to just be in and to feel mm -hmm. like you're part of the community. So if you get a chance, come yeah. on down. If you have not seen us, go to our website at goodmancenter.org and see what we're up to, yeah. and just join us at any time. That's what we're here for. Awesome, yeah. very cool. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show and sharing a little bit more with our viewers today. Um, again, I'm Josh with Josh Lavik and Associates, and this is the Community Spotlight at the Goodman Community Center on Best of Wisconsin Homes. Welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Homes. I'm Josh with Josh Lavik and Associates. We're uh, doing our community spotlight today over at the Garver Feed Mill over on the near east side of Madison, uh, right off of Fair Oaks Avenue. So I'm here today with Bethany. She's the uh, events coordinator and that kind of thing. So. Director of Public Programming. Director of Public Programming, <laughs> yep. sorry. That's uh, okay. <laughs> so tell us, uh, yeah, so you know a lot about this space, obviously. So why don't you tell our viewers and share with them a little more about Garver Feed Mill. Yeah, so Garver Feed Mill is a recently renovated historic building located behind Ulbrick Botanical Gardens. <laughs> it is a hub for a little under a dozen small businesses. So there's a lot of different things that you could do at Garver during a visit. You could also just come and enjoy the historic nature of the space. Oh, for sure. I mean, looking right behind yeah. us here, I mean, just the, the space itself is just absolutely Pretty stunning beautiful. and beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just this huge open room. we got awesome skylights coming through. Yeah. I mean, The light incredible. is certainly great in here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we do have kind of a mix. Uh, it looks like you're setting up for an event here. So what kind of events could take place here? Yeah, so um, we definitely rent the space for private events. And you could do private events of all sizes. So we have event spaces for 20 people, for 50 to 80 people. And this large space behind me can do about 350 to 400 people. Holy cow. Um, so private events for sure. Yep. But um, we also do a lot of public programming. Cool. Um, so tonight we're having a jazz concert in the atrium. We also have um, markets throughout the year. So we have a vintage market coming up on Labor Day weekend. We have the Good Day Market in December. And then in January, we actually host the Dane County Late Winter Market um, for farmers over the winter in this space. So you could come every Saturday to get your farmer market fix in hey, February. There we go. <laughs> yeah. That sounds pretty good. And you said there's about a dozen businesses and stuff in here yeah, too? What exactly. kind of What kind of mix of businesses do we have So here? even when there's not a special event yeah. going on, you could come and enjoy food, drink, and wellness activities at Garver. Okay. So um, there's the Madison Staple Ian's Pizza, mm -hmm. which you could probably see oh, in the yeah. background there. Pizza um, by the slice is yep, pretty awesome. Exactly. Um, which you could grab on your way out of yoga class. Okay. <laughs> um, if that's your thing. Sounds about um, right. So there's a perennial yoga studio is here as well as Kosha Spa. Okay. So um, wellness activities, food, and beverage. So there's 
a newer coffee roaster, Ledger Coffee, who's on the first floor. And then the Garver Lounge is also a new business, okay. which offers craft cocktails and uh, a locally sourced uh, bar food menu. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. What, uh, so for maybe some of our viewers that have never really explored Garver or this side of town, I guess, what would you maybe say to some of our viewers that maybe have never been here? What would you highlight as something, anything that you haven't shared already? Sure. So um, definitely finding a way to follow what's going on. Uh -huh. There's, it's a very busy space. Mm -hmm. So um, following at Garver Feed Mill or at Garver Events on social media is a great way to kind of keep in tune with what's happening here because mm -hmm. events are so varied. You may not be into the vintage market, sure. but you can't wait for the farmers to get here. Mm -hmm. So um, keeping up with what's happening at Garver is probably half the battle. Yeah. Um, it is fun to just show up sometimes and you know stumble upon free live music on the patio, mm -hmm. um, which will be happening this Saturday okay. as well. Oh, <laughs> um, great. So uh, yeah. So I would say that's the main thing to really kind of keep in tune with what's happening here because it's always changing. Awesome, definitely. Well, uh, any last words or anything else that you might want to share that I maybe didn't ask um, you about? People may uh, be wondering about how to get here, oh, which yeah. we are right on the Capital City bike trail okay. and um, we also have a B-Cycle port on site. So. We are huge proponents of biking here. We actually get a very large uh, brunch crowd on Saturdays and Sundays that okay. bike in. Um, but there are also about 700 parking spots within a quarter mile of Garver. So we do have an on-site lot, yep. but there's also um, public lots at the Ulbrich Park baseball field that are available for use. And you could find a full parking map uh, about available parking on our website, garverfeedmill.com. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, coming on the show and sharing some more with our viewers today. Yeah, uh, thank you for visiting the mill. Oh, yeah, the space is beautiful. I'll definitely be hanging out here, maybe grabbing some lunch after we're done. Yep, I mean, <laughs> got to uh, grab the ends before you leave. I know, right? It's a good spot, yep. that's for sure. So, well, thanks again. And uh, again, you're watching Best of Wisconsin Homes and our Community Spotlight. I'm Josh with Josh Lavick and Associates. Have a great day. Welcome back to Best of Wisconsin Homes. I'm Josh with Josh Lavik and Associates doing our community spotlight video here today with Connor here at uh, Brees Stadium, Brees Stevens Field, excuse me, uh, right along East Washington Avenue and Patterson Street, kind of right downtown near the Isthmus here. So tell us a little more about this place and what makes it unique. Well, thanks for being here, Josh. Yeah, Brees Stevens Field was built in 1926. Brees Stevens was actually the mayor of Madison in the late 1800s, 1888 to 1889. Uh, he sold and donated this land uh, to the city. It was a, kind of a swamp land, became a park. 1926, it was built into a stadium. Uh, 1935 is the newer part of the stadium that was built mm -hmm. down that way. And then uh, our group, uh, Big Top Events, took over the facility uh, in 2016, and, uh, or 2015, I should say. Uh, and then in 2019, we brought professional soccer here. And in order to bring professional soccer uh, to the facility, we partnered with the city on about three and a half million dollars uh, in improvements. We have new uh, suite areas, uh, concessions, restroom, upgraded seating. Um, and you know, we're fortunate to host about 240 events here uh, every year. Um, so not just soccer? Not just soccer, yeah. Oh. We, we, when we took over the facility in 2015, we knew it needed a primary tenant. Sure. Um, it, but we didn't know exactly what that would be. We actually took over the business without having a business plan, uh, but we knew we wanted to do community events and concerts and athletic uses. And then in 2018, we announced that we were bringing pro soccer here. In 2019, we launched uh, with pro soccer. So we'll play about 20, uh, you know, in a non-pandemic year, 20 right. uh, pro soccer games here, but then have concerts and high school athletic uses, community uses, uh, festivals, beer festivals, food festivals, music festivals, uh, and a variety of different uses to program about 240 different uh, uses of the facility a year. Wow, that's quite a few, uh, quite a few events throughout the year. Holy cow, what are uh, maybe some of the top three or four highlighted events that somebody might uh, come out here for? Yeah, so in addition to soccer, you, you know, we'll have about between three to six national touring acts a year, musical acts a year. Uh, you know, earlier earlier this year we had, um, you know, Willie Nelson and the Avid Brothers. We've had Steve Miller Band, Darius Rucker, Toby Keith, about 20 different 
touring national acts have played the facility. We have a capacity for 10,000 for field events, okay. 5,000 uh, for athletic events. So, uh, you, you know, concerts are a big deal. Also, we're the home for the Madison Radicals, the ultimate Frisbee okay. uh, team, which is one of the better uh, professional ultimate Frisbee teams in the entire country. Wow. Uh, but then we'll do a variety of other festivals as well. We've done uh, beer festivals. We did a, a seltzer and cider festival this year. Uh, we always do a Mexican Independence Day celebration. Um, and then because uh, of COVID, we hosted Taste of Madison here, here this year oh, off sure. the square and we hosted concerts on the square as well. So, you know, it's really nice to have four walls, yeah. seating, power, restroom, stuff that mm -hmm. if you were in a, you know, a temporary site, you wouldn't have. And mm -hmm. so the great thing about the facility, it's a turf field and mm -hmm. uh, we can do pretty much anything. It's common for us to do a concert on a Friday night and by Saturday night, we'll be playing uh, soccer and have 5,000 people in here for soccer. Wow, that's like, a lot of stuff going on, you guys, uh, and you did all came in with with very little business plan, just uh, try to figure it out, jumped right in. Huh? Yeah, I wouldn't suggest that to others, but we we, <laughs> we knew it was a cool facility. We just didn't yeah. know what we would do with it. Yeah, um, and, and then it's just kind of created itself, and now mm -hmm. uh, you know pro soccer has become a big part of, of what we do. It is that primary tenant. The, the schedule kind of falls mm -hmm. around yeah. those 18 to 20 pro soccer games a year. Yeah, and we're fortunate to just uh, we're, we're really fortunate the way that the community has embraced. Mm -hmm. uh, Ford Madison and, and the pro soccer product that we've, we've put on the field here. Yeah, I know I've driven past this facility I don't know how many times on East Washington Avenue yeah. and it's definitely you know one of those iconic sort of structures and you drive by and you always kind of wonder what's going on in there right because it's kind of hard to see inside yeah. from from the outside but uh, kind of you know now that it's redone but prior to yeah. that it kind of had like a prison feel to it right these sure. big concrete walls you don't know what's going on behind it yeah uh, it's got a you know a great history uh, yeah. you know Jesse Owens ran a track exhibition here in the 1930s there used to be uh, you know, minor league baseball in the 1940s and 50s. Uh, there was uh, stock car and midget car races going on here. Oh, in wow. 1933, they closed uh, East Washington Avenue and the entire facility and they had a, a Calgary stampede, uh, like, like a horse and, 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 uh, and cow show. So um, a lot of cool things have happened here, but, but now it's primarily um, a soccer and community events yeah. facility. And it's cool to have, you know, this old historic facility uh, that's just nine blocks from the Capitol. Yeah, literally nine blocks away. I mean, it's, it feels like you're right downtown and so connected to so many other things and go easy, easily grab restaurant uh, somewhere and come to come to the soccer game afterwards. And yeah, if we had to pick a place to locate a pro soccer stadium yeah. anywhere in Madison, this is where it would be. So we're just really fortunate to have it in this great district, great neighborhood, so close to the, to the Capitol. Well, Connor, hey, I really appreciate you coming on the show and, uh, and sharing with us a little bit more about Bree Stevens and the history here and uh, make sure we can uh, get some of our viewers to come check out a game or, or an event sometime. Sounds great, Josh. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Again, this is Josh with Josh Lavick and Associates, and you're watching Best of Wisconsin Homes. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Hope you enjoyed the show. I'm Josh with Josh Lavick and Associates. And if you're thinking about relocating maybe to the Madison area or just want to check out some different communities or homes in the Madison area, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help.